Hey everybody, welcome to day two of Lightbox 2020. We're back again. We got two live streams in a row today. Two. Yesterday and today. I got Dustin with me. Today we're going to talk. Yesterday we talked about animals and character design. And today we're going to talk about animal locomotion, four legged walks, and well, four legged locomotion. And one of my points is I mean, the whole. This class is, is, is called four legged locomotion. And within that, there's a whole bunch of stuff that falls under that umbrella. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Before we get into that, I just want to remind you guys, if you want to get more stuff related to Lightbox, get some great deals on some brand new posters and images that we've got, some great deals on our courses that are related to Lightbox, then go on over to creatureartteacher.com slash LBX2020. And that's where you're going to get... All kinds of great deals uh, on our website related to Lightbox. And so we're really excited about that. We're happy that we can be part of this. I want to thank Bobby Chu for having us back again this year. Um, you know, last year when we did it in person, it was such a great experience. And we were really looking forward to doing it again this year uh, in Pasadena. Um, but, hey, you know, life happens and here we are and the whole world's going through it. But this is a great substitute. Yep. So we're getting to do light box from my desk. From home. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And so I'm happy about that. And so like I said, I want to thank Bobby and, and the whole crew for having us and just putting all the effort into pulling this together because it definitely was not easy. And uh, and so we're really happy to, about that. Uh, and Nick is reminding me here, you can get uh, special deals including uh, uh, limited edition prints and discounts by going to creatureartteacher.com slash LBX2020. So I just want to remind you there. And so uh, the other thing, too, that I'm really excited about, uh, uh, well, I'm excited about Lightbox, but I'm really excited about also, is for the last four months, uh, Dustin and I have been working on a brand new course, uh, uh, my approach to how to draw birds of prey. We put a lot of time into it. It's, it's turned into our biggest, our largest course yet. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just full of stuff and so that is up for pre-order at 50% off so uh, the actual course is going to come out in a couple weeks and uh, but if you want to get it for 50% off you can pre-order it now by going over to creatureartteacher.com and uh, you'll see it there it's really cool I'm really excited about it um, I think it's going to be probably about 25 or 30 videos <laughs> and many, we've many, definitely got many, over 30 hours of content many hours yeah many hours probably you're probably it's probably enough for if you're watching the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings series, right. uh, the, un, the uncut version. Yes, exactly. That that's basically <laughs> how how much there is. In fact, I think there's more than that. <laughs> so anyway, we're really excited about it, and so uh, so go check that out along with all the other courses. We've got some great new courses that have come out with Tony Cipriano and Tim Hodge. We got some great ones coming up with Ronnie Williford, Chuck Williams, um, and of course, there's always the good standbys with. Lyndon Ruddy and everything else. So we're really, really excited and uh, and happy to have you guys uh, uh, with us today. So let's go back to uh, and I've got I, I said I got Dustin with me today and I've got Nick in Sarasota. He's hey, going to be fielding questions as well. And uh, but I just want to talk about four legged locomotion and uh, just what that what that is to me as an animator. Uh, I've been an animator for thirty plus years and. Um, it's interesting because I, I, you know, we have a lot of students. When I've I've trained a lot of interns and and young artists, and there's a certain state, there's a stage that you're at in, in early in your career when you're young, where everything is trying about it's it's all about trying to figure out mechanics. It's trying to figure out those mechanics. What are the me mechanics? What if, how do you move this around? And it's so hard to take that in the beginning and add to it the performance okay and so because the most important part of animation character animation is the performance it's not so much the mechanics the mechanics yes you want to be believable but you really want that performance to be there and I've seen so many people get hung up on the complexities and the mechanics of four-legged walks and uh, and then lose that performance and so we had to learn really quickly um, or I did, and, and along with other artists that were new like me at the time, uh, on Lion King, for instance. When I came in, uh, Lion King was my third movie that I worked on with Disney. And 
I really needed to get to the point where moving a character around on four legs was second nature so that I could retain the performance. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today and show you. Because um, once you understand that, that those mechanics, um, and you can, it becomes part of your language and it becomes uh, second nature. And so then you don't really have to worry about it. It's there in the back of your head and you're thinking about it as you're animating. But what's forefront in your head is the performance, the attitude, the personality, and the mechanics are there to support that. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I guess that's what I'm trying to get to is that you can adjust those mechanics to support the attitude, to support the, the performance and all of that. So that's what I want to get into. And so I want to use some examples. I mean, there's so many, these are just some different, because I, 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 I teach you know animal locomotion. Uh, I've got so many different versions of just animals moving. For instance, we've got a horse walking. You know, I've, I've got on my uh, course on how to draw horses. Uh, I also get into walks, trots, and uh, and runs. And so here is a horse walking. I've got, hey, here's a kangaroo hopping. <laughs> kangaroo. <laughs> There's so many. Some are rougher than others. This is something I did live when we were doing our benefit for the fires in Australia. Uh, this is this is one where I was talking about Nala from The Lion King. And we did just a very quick, you know, in the span of about 45 minutes, I talked about how she moved around. And you, you'll see that every... Here's a very cartoony kind of Warner Brothers cat prancing, kind of prancing along. I did this one on a live stream as well. There's so many different modes of movement and locomotion. Here's a, a, an alligator which falls under the kind of the, the reptile world, obviously, which moves in a completely different way. So I'm going to, basically the point I'm trying to make by showing you all these different uh, walk cycles is that I'm going to show you one thing, but there's an infinite number of, of ways of moving characters on four legs and attitudes, and it's going to be up to you to take the information that I give you today and then run with it, okay? This is from my how to draw fox or how to draw wolves, coyotes, and foxes uh, course, where I go over animation. This is a, a fox trot. Hey, it's fox trot. Fox trot. And in the same kind of style, we got a wolf running. And uh, let's see what we got here. Here's something completely different. It's a little stiffer. I'd like to go in and finish the drawings. But we got a little uh, elephant walking. We've just got I, once again the point I'm trying to make is just lots of different modes of mo uh, locomotion okay here we are uh, if this is our how to draw big cats so oh, here yeah. yeah remember this one so we got a tiger without the stripes we got a tiger running I got my coffee coffee a coffee and then we're back to a horse again we got a horse running man you got to look at the stuff uh james baxter James Baxter. James Baxter is one of my favorite animators in the world. He's just an incredible animator. If you don't know who he is, look him up. And he was a uh, supervising animator on uh, Spirit. Uh, Spirit, what's the whole, the whole title? Uh, Something um, of the Cimarron, Spirit of the Cimarron, whatever. Yeah. Uh, DreamWorks Spirit. If you could see the animation he did of that horse uh, in his rough animation, it's some of the most beautiful horse, four-legged, whatever, locomotion. It's just some of the most beautiful animation I've ever the seen. Spirit Stallion of the... Stallion of the Cimarron. And, um, and it's J James Baxter. Like I said, James Baxter is just a master of mechanics, but he's also a master of not letting the mechanics overtake the performance and really putting forth a great performance. Like I said, I, I just can't praise James Baxter enough. He's one of my favorite animators. He's, I've learned so much from him over the years. We were at Disney together. We didn't work in the same studio. I was in Florida. He was in California. But every shot that he got through dailies, and I got to see up on the screen when we were making light, he was Rafiki and Lion King. Um, I just learned so much from it. And so I really highly recommend that you look up James Baxter if you're interested in animation and, and uh, follow him. So there's our horse running here. There's completely different, you know. I'm going to be showing you uh, locomotion in profile, and then you can take that information and you can turn it around in space. And so this is this is a cheetah running in three quarter from my how to draw big cats course, and trots. Well, here's something we didn't. Well, we did talk. We did a trot. 
Look at the difference between a horse trot right here, you know, trying to get the weight and how stiff it is, to and the timing too, and a fox trot. See, and how much lighter he feels. So there's lots of different, you know, different ways of locomotion. Here's a cat walk. This is a tiger walking, and I really, I pushed it to exaggerate the movement a little bit. So you can see it's a little over animated, but I wanted the 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 students to understand that movement, and so I over animated it just a little bit so they could they could see that. Um, YouTube question: What studies have you done to do this kind of animation? Well, I do a lot. I, I one of the things I I love to do is just see the animals in person. And so I'll draw them. First of all, I'll study, the, anim I'll study the, the anatomy of the animal first. Just I want to understand that anatomy inside and out, all the way out to the skin. Understand the bone structure and how those bones move from a mechanical standpoint. Get into the musculature. How those, and I don't, need to, I don't need to, it doesn't need to be like a, 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 an academic anatomy lesson. I don't need to know every single little muscle. But I do want to understand the muscle groups and how they work and what they do to move the limbs in the way that they do. And the range of motion too and then from there um, and then just how what does it look like on the outside and then I can take that and, uh, uh, and draw but then I'm, I'm observing real life I want to see how they're moving and then I do lots of videotape lots of taping of what of, of animals and then going home or going into the studio and breaking those tapes down and really analyzing how that movement happens and what's going on there um, and it's amazing how, you know, what, one of the biggest things I learned is, you know, I started learning four-legged walks before I really started looking at the animals. I was just learning the mechanics. And I would over-animate. And then when I went into, into and started really studying and seeing the animals themselves, especially with animals like cats or dogs that are a little bit more light-footed, um, it's incredible how efficient they are and how much there's not a lot of extra movement like, like we add in the animation to make it more interesting. And so I've kind of struck this balance. Um, this is just a small aesthetic, but it's a balance between pushing a little bit more movement, caricature into the, into the perform, into the movement, uh, not necessarily performance, but uh, as opposed to what's in nature. It's taking nature and caricaturing it. Uh, and then here, and then so, this is the last thing I want to show you on, on this section right here. So when I, uh, one of the things I, uh, I want to understand all of this so that ultimately you can create a performance that's mechanically complex, actually, but it's, it's got personality and you're not having to think about those mechanics. And so I've, uh, uh, for those of you, those of you, uh, are, this is old hat for you because I've been working on this for a while, but I've got a character named, uh, a film that I'm working on called Snow Bear. Here's, uh, here's a poster for it. It's about a bear that is lonely, lives in the Arctic, and so he creates a snow bear to keep him company. But he's this really kind of, he's just this really great guy. He's just, uh, um, he's just happy-go-lucky, he's sweet. And so one of the things that I did in trying to uh, kind of study for, for the character that I want to have for this, uh, for the animation, the first thing I started uh, studying was real polar bears. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I um, I directed, co-directed uh, Brother Bear, Disney's Brother Bear. Uh, it came out in 2003. And uh, so I had a lot of knowledge of, of bears in my head, but not so much polar bears. And so I wanted to understand them. And so one of the things that really helps me understand their movements, once I understand their, their, uh, their, skele their uh, skeletal system and their musculature, then I want to get into their movement. So this is something where I sat down one day and just spent the whole day just drawing this out and really trying to uh, understand how they move. And I was looking at video footage of polar bears and then I went away and just did my own version. And so I wanted to feel that weight. I wanted to feel uh, kind of that overlapping movement of the head on the body, the shifting shoulder blades going back and forth, all the muscle in the arms, all of that. And then just kind of make it my own and caricature it just slightly. And so doing something like this, just going through the process of figuring out that those mechanics really helps, it helps you get past it, so you don't have to worry about it later when you're, when you're doing your animation, but it also starts to, that, that, that animal, and the character starts to become real for you. And so with that, once I got that in my head, then I was able to go in and start 
uh, developing what I thought the character would look like. And so <coughs> you can see that this version is a much more streamlined, kind of stripped down version of a polar bear, not so uh, as musculature and real as the other one. By the way, did you get the inspiration to Snow Bear after we did the uh, the Bears course, or was no? That was, 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 I, was I was I did that before. Before, yeah, I was before, and so uh, so within this, you know, I've got I've got him in his world, and and here I was doing some thumbnails of him uh, making the Snow Bear, uh, but then here he is with his Snow Bear. Just these are little storyboards that I had, um, and little moments of them having a good time playing hide and seek. Uh, here's one where they're uh, a little piece of animation where they're sitting under the stars and he's looking up at the sky and he sees the, the shooting star. And so it's just little bits of them having fun. And um, and he really is just this super nice... Let me get over here. It's just really... This is his attitude here. So I, once I had that in my head and I had the mechanics down... This is all really long-winded to get up to this this shot that I was able to do. Here, I animated him. This is all about personality. I didn't think about mechanics anymore. I wanted the mechanics to support to, to support. Blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm support. getting that out. <laughs> I wanted the mechanics to support the personality, and and and, and not the whole thing is not about the mechanics, but that it's all about personality. Although. A mecha mechanics wise this is fairly complex with him coming in and running in circles but it's once again it's four-legged locomotion take that knowledge that you have of four-legged locomotion then apply it to personality and so this is and then just have fun with it so this is what I did with him so I am going to go through and show you in kind of academic uh, four-legged motion today but what I want you to do, if you want to be an animator, is to take this and practice to the point where you can have some fun with it. Okay? And so, once again, here's our little character, Snow Bear. Or, uh, this isn't Snow Bear. The Snow Bear is made out of the snow. But the, actually, we named him Glenn. Glenn? Yeah, this guy yeah. is Glenn, named after Glenn Keane. Yeah. So, there he is having some fun. By the so, way, uh, I'm sorry, but right. I just have a few quick questions here from... Uh, uh, oh, Jim up. Jackson's watching. Stop. Oh. Jim Jackson, <laughs> but um, I can't talk now. I, I'm too scared now. But from the psych, uh, from all the walking and the running cycles, uh, were all those done, were all those animated once, and also are any of those available in any of the anatomy courses? Yes, yes, and yes. They're all animated on ones, and they're all available. Uh, like the horse is available in my horse drawing course. The the cats are available in my how to draw big cats, and the wolf and fox and coyote. Are available on my how to draw wolves, foxes, yeah, and coyotes. The bear, even the bear one is uh, part of the bear course, isn't it? Uh, I have a different one for the bear. Oh, one. different. One. Yeah, a different one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, hey, Jim Jackson. So, for those of you that don't know Jim Jackson, Jim Jackson and I have worked together for thirty years. I forgot. Is he the or twenty nine years? Twelve. I think he's the twelfth man to walk on the moon. Twelve. Yeah. yeah. But um, uh, supervising animator of Keen Eye Human. Really good stuff. Worked on uh, Lilo and Stitch and Lion King and all kinds of great stuff. He's an animator at uh, Blue Sky. So look him up. Jim Jackson. James Young Jackson. And Jim just wrote over here. Says, and it says, uh, I am watching as my wife tries on Mother of the Bride dresses. Oh, nice. Mother of the Bride? The daughter's not getting married. What? 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 <laughs> So yesterday we did uh, character design. I was talking about uh, how I do character design with animals. And uh, this was a character that we came up with. I did a little bit of a drawover before today's class. And I thought, you know what? It might be kind of fun to animate this guy. Um, and, you know, it, it's a lion. Uh, it's somewhat realistic, but also stylized. And I thought, he's got this kind of regal kind of feel. So I thought it might be fun to do a walk with him, but try to get some attitude into, into it. Try to get some personality. Nice. So without further ado, by the way, uh, question about Snow Bear. Yeah. Uh, are you doing any underwater swimming scenes for Snow Bear? And if so, how do you combine motion form and water mechanics? Well, that's the thing. You 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 study it. I look at it. Yes, there is going to be polar bear swimming in the water, and um, and it's just a matter of. Uh, 
<laughs> pulling up as much reference as you can and studying it. And you know, I, um, not many of you know, polar. Did you know polar bears are classified as marine mammals, like whales what? and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because they live most of their life out on the ice, out in the ocean. That is and true. yeah, and they and they swim. They'll swim for days, you know. So it's pretty incredible. Uh, but oh. yeah, so I'll just I'll study it and uh, and. And then you think about the you think about the physics too. You know, water is a lot more dense than air, so you want to you want to have that feel. There's going to be a much different kind of drag to the fur and the fat and the body and the mass and all that kind of stuff than there would be on land. So I'm going to go ahead and lose uh, some. Actually, let's just do new project. We're going to do Jim. Jim went. Oops, mother of the groom. <laughs> mother of the groom. There you go. Gotcha. Well, congratulations, Daddy O. And and also he says thanks for hyping me up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I am. Uh, let's see here. I want to go a little smaller here. Uh, How many times would you draw a an animal character design before you start animating? Oh. Uh, se se seventeen times. Se seventeen. <laughs> no, it's it's just whatever it takes before you're uh, competent. A lot. Like you, you draw it exactly and precisely one. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here, I want to come up with the attitude first, and I want to make sure that our size is right. So the first, I want him to be up, you know, kind of proud, have his head up. And so, I want to get this kind of attitude. I'm just going to scribble it in really quick first. And I'm not going to be able to draw this really huge. I'll try to go out a little bit bigger. I can tell already I'm going to have to shrink this. I've already started it too big. And uh, I have a question based on the, uh, the Snow Bear test sequence of him leaping around and rolling up, yeah. rolling on his back. Uh, what was your reference for a snow bear hopping around when bears don't really hop around? And could it be taken from another four-legged animal? Yes, it could be. And it, was, it wasn't my... I didn't have any reference. I did that out of my head. But in my mind, I've seen so many dogs in that first snow. You, we've all seen videos on, on, on the internet where people open up the door and it's the first snow and the dog just goes bounding through the <laughs> snow and they're just bouncing up and down yeah. and they're just like the happiest th animal in the world and they're just so happy and that you just can't help but smile that was my that was my inspiration so I took that and that's what I was thinking in my brain when I was animating Goldfish4 Eva on YouTube asks, I love how you do anatomy lessons, and I know this isn't a request stream, but I was wondering if you could draw a goldfish sometime. They have a really cool anatomy. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can do it out of my head. <laughs> Gotta get that dorsal fin, and they're really long, right? I think so. And their tail splits. This is my cartoon version. <laughs> Pectoral fins. Pectoral fin. So if you look up a gold, a, a goldfish, and he's like, "Oh, way off." <laughs> Lateral line going down the side. Got like the tail splits. There's my goldfish. There's my quick. 30 second goldfish. 30 second run. <laughs> J 
do make that as a uh, challenge sometime. Whether if it's a, well, if it's a video recording or just or here, live draw stream. this and don't look at reference. Just do it. Well, not just not only just do it, but try to do it in a certain time frame, like under like under a minute, or un, or like see like see how how fast you can do a drawing in certain time frames. Yeah. And if you go past the time limit, like you have to get punished somehow. <laughs> punished? Yeah, like eating a eating a chip eating a hot chip. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or drink Epic Hack. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, come on, screen, get bigger. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just, I just want to get this first initial sketch in. I'm going to do it very loose. Here I'm drawing through the character. I want, to, I want him to be big and muscular. That's what the goldfish sound sound like. Can you do the voice, please? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, so As you know. <laughs> You made me. All right, so I gotta pull. What I need to do is pull this arm back. Once again, if you understand your dad me here, and we gotta pull this back like so. The shoulder blade would shift, so it's back here like this. See, for practicing, do you advise? Spending more time on rough works or finished ones. Say that again. Do you advise spending more time on rough works or finished ones? Like, do you like? Would you rather? Is it better off practicing on on like a rough drawing or something finished, but you want to add more details to the finish? Well, it's one leads to the other. The rough, the rough leads to the to the finish so we're, we're yeah you want to make one. sure that that rough well think of a rough as as like the the blueprints for a house if you got bad blueprints you're gonna have a bad house so you just want to make sure that that those roughs are right before you before you take it any further right so here I'm just gonna keep working this I want to make sure that this first drawing is in the right place before we go any further. So here's here's um, I'm going to show you some cheats in uh, animating four-legged walks. Okay. So here I'm uh, doing the first key. I'm trying to find the the right uh, attitude and and uh, proportions for the character. But and I'm going to I actually have to draw this head a little bit bigger. But um, what I want you to see, hold on one second, is this. Um, I'm going to show you, now that we've got the position of the front legs, I know every position of every foot for the rest of the entire walk cycle now. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, ready for no okay. question? Nope, not yet. I just want to show you what I mean real quick. Shedding up soon. Yeah, okay, shedding up soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here is the feet. I'm, and I'm, I'm going to keep this. I'm, I'm going to make his steps very kind of short and kind of quick, uh, having this like kind of regal attitude. And so, and I'm going to maybe have him high step a little bit. And, um, but I do know because this is this is one of the keys. So this is gonna this his feet are far apart, and it's right before this foot, the the front right foot, 
is going to come off the ground because this is it's come back as far as it's going to come back and it's about to come off the ground so this also tells me then that this is going to be the low point of where his shoulders are because his legs are spread apart so therefore the body's down when the leg is underneath that's the highest point of the shoulder so that tells me this is the low point okay and if this is the low point then if we come back here to the back there's the, the hip right there that's going to come down then that means this is going to be the high point right actually I'm going to bring that in just a touch just a touch just a touch just a, just a wolf of thin crisp <laughs> right there so there's the break okay and if and if this is the foot here that's about to come off the ground then it's going to have to be replaced by the back foot coming in so that tells me the back foot is off the ground the back right foot right right like this Ta -da. just like that the uh, the back the back feet don't have as much uh, flexibility as the front feet that's another thing to think about and you'll see that they're a little bit smaller here's another little trick if you want to and I, I was telling this yesterday to the to the group yesterday Here's where the femur connects, and if you imagine the femur coming in, you've got your muscles here and muscles here. This is the glute muscles here. They come in and connect to the knee right here, which come in. There's your ankle, and then there's your your metatarsals. Look at this this line and this line, and see how they're parallel. That line and that line. If you keep them parallel, no matter what position the leg is in, then you'll. Oop, uh, let's call this the lion walk demo. See, that's what I like about uh, auto save. It reminds me to save okay so what that means is let's say um, I've got the hip is right here with the knee and we're scrunching it up if I keep these um, parallel like this and I can draw the leg in here draw some skin there there's the ankle skin there and there's the foot and it looks right see there I learned this, um, and if, if, for those of you that were watching yesterday, I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but um, I learned this when I was animating the beast. I was having a hard time with the beast, and I went to Glenn Keane, who is the supervisor, and he explained this to me about, you know, about the feet, about the legs. And uh, from that point on, I never forgot it. And from that point on, it just really helped me out when I'm animating four-legged walks. But anyway, going back to um, this point, where knowing that the hip is up in the air, if this is the low point on the shoulders, then we have to have the high point on the hips. And that means that the, this foot's up in the air because it's going to replace the front right. And the, uh, the rear left foot is going to be directly underneath. There's, I'm going to plant the foot right here. Here's the ankle right about here. We'll just shade that in. You might hear some rain. We live in Florida, so we got lots of rain this time of year, and it's uh, coming down pretty good. Oh yeah, we got quite a bit coming in. Look at that. Oh man, it's gonna be raining throughout the entire. Uh... <laughs> I think the entire stream. The entire stream. Thank you. I couldn't get that out. <laughs> Are you ready for questions? Or are you still? Oh no, I'm ready. All right. Yep. So. Uh, I've drawn a ton of big uh, cat drawings from zoos and uh, reserves, but we'll be going to Kenya next summer. What differences in observation and sketching you noticed between drawing big cats in uh, quote unquote caged and natural environments? The biggest difference is the condition of the animal. We were just in Kenya, we were in the Maasai Mara back in October. And the biggest difference is that is the uh, just the, the you know zoo animals tend to be fat for lack of a better way of putting it um, they just tend to be fat let me show you this bingo look at that I just happen to have it this is a wild lion that I photographed when I was in Kenya 
and um, you just won't see a zoo lion that looks like this. Look how lean he is. Look how strong he is. Look at those triceps. Look at that latissimus muscle going down the side. He's just a really well uh, uh, athletic, well uh, um, seasoned animal. And here's a uh, here's a female. Same thing. Look at look at the musculature in her. Just incredible. Look at that look at that tricep mass right there on her arm. Just super strong. No fat on her. That's the biggest Rough. difference. You know, that's the big difference between zoo animals and uh, uh, wild animals. Hey, look. Simba. Simba. There he is. There's Simba taking a schnooze. Schnooze. Yeah. Is, but, um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is uh, TV Paint Animation 11 Pro your preferred animation software? Yes. Any thoughts about Adobe Animate? I, I don't use Adobe Animate. Never have. Uh, TV Paint is the only thing I've used. And are you currently using the TV Paint Pro version? Yes. Gotcha. TV, TV, oh, TV Paint Animation 11 Pro. That's what I've got. Gotcha. Are you guys doing anything special art-wise for Halloween? Spooky live stream, etc.? Et oh yeah, we always do. We will. We will this year. It is the monster house. <laughs> No, right, so, Mash. Yeah, Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash. So here's the thumb or the dew claw. Okay, so here's our first pose. I'm going to show you guys another cheat for when you're animating something in profile. <clears throat> Especially with a walk. You have two strides that make a walk, right? And so we have to do this again with the rear left foot up in the air, right? And the, and the front right foot in the front. So um, here's a cool cheat. Let's do another drawing. I'm going to turn on my light table so we can see the drawing behind. And we need to do the opposite drawing. The opposite uh, key. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, I'm going to trace that silhouette. I'm going to just redraw it. When did Aaron try out digital animation for the first time? And how was his experience? Did he struggle? Uh, I didn't struggle uh, because TV Paint is so uh, user friendly, I think. Uh, it was really just you learning the software. I did um, I did a commercial about five years ago. Maybe it was more than that. Seven years ago. Uh, I did a commercial called The Bear and the Hare. Where we had to animate. Uh, we did we did 2D animation of the of this bear character and a hare, you know, rabbit, um, for this British commercial. And um, all the guys at the studio uh, at, at Premise Entertainment where I was working um, with Dom Carolla, one of my Disney colleagues who has a studio now, uh, we worked on this commercial together. They were all working digitally and I had never done it and I was like, nah, I'm not going to learn digital. You know, to, I want to just get through the commercial. So I actually did everything on paper. But it, was, it wasn't until after we finished the commercial that I really sat down with the guys and talked to them. And uh, and they all, the, Dom knows me really well. And they were using Toon Boom, Harmony, and uh, and I asked them, you know, what they thought would be best for me if I wanted, you know, because I'd heard about this other thing called TV Paint, and they felt like TV Paint was the thing that I would like. And so, uh, so, that's what I went on to, and I never used anything else. So here what I'm doing is I'm bunching up, actually I should pull this up like this. I want this to feel like we're bunching up the fur. So I'm, I'm keeping the same silhouette, but what I'm doing is moving the opposite arms into place. 
in opposite legs. Boop, boop. You can see that. Boop. And I'm, I'm going to have that head just kind of sit still. I might have him come up and down just a little bit, but because of the attitude, I just want him to just, that head to re barely move. Have that like military. Yes, like, exactly. Militant kind of posture. YouTube question Do you work with your model sheet underneath the animation, or you just look at it on another screen? I look at it on another screen. I don't look. I don't keep it under my animation. That would be distracting for me. So here, so again, I'm going to have now instead of being up in the air, this foot here is on the ground. You see him like this. You see that, and then the the foot in the background. That is the one that's off the ground. Like I said, this is a little cheat. You can only get away with doing this if it's in profile. You can't do it if it's in three quarter. It doesn't work that way. And then here, there's this dew claw coming up. The wrist. YouTube question, why do you prefer TV paint over Toon Boom? I, don't, I, I just prefer TV paint because that's all I've ever used. I've never used Toon Boom. So that's that's why. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like change. Once I find something I like, I stick with it. And I don't, I don't use anything else. I become adept at it, and then that makes me faster. So here you can see already that movement in the front feet. They're popping back and forth and the back feet. Looks like he's stomping up and, up and down. Actually on this one I'm going to lose <coughs> these lines here just so we don't get a little pop in there. YouTube question, is this the line from yesterday's stream? Yes, it is. Just bringing it to life. Bringing it to life, baby. It's okay. alive. So there we go. There, there. And that tail will be in the same spot as well. <clears throat> and I spent all my time getting making sure that these these keys are right. I want to get the keys all, you know, I'll spend time on those drawings. Quite a bit of time making sure they're all drawn right because those keys become the the blueprints basically for the breakdowns and the in-betweens as well so you want to make sure that they're right I get this anatomy right so there now we got our our lion just like so so now we've got two of our main keys all right so I'm gonna split them apart because they're opposite now we need a key in between, and that's the key where the back legs are spread apart, and we have the high point on the shoulders. So there we go. So I've got to put something in between here. So I know that if this is the high point on the hips, I'm going to start with putting a, a little tick here and drop the hips down. Just dropping that plane of the hips down. And here I've got the shoulders right here. I'm going to bring the shoulders up. Right about up here, like so. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference here if I pop back and forth. What was the transition like when you moved from uh, traditional pencil animation to uh, computer, to digital animation? 
Say that again. What was the tra- What was your transition like from going from uh, paper and pencil uh, traditional animation to digital animation, like working on a computer? Um, it wasn't bad. I you know I I actually I like uh, I, I'm kind of in the minority, but I like. Uh, digital animation a little better because I can get results faster. So I like that. So here in the background, I'm just drawing that foot. The other thing I have to think about is I know that I, I, uh, I've got to do half the distance between the feet here. See that? So I'm getting that foot put right there in the middle. Dropping this down, or actually bringing this up. Sorry, this is supposed supposed to be the high point, and then dropping those hips down. Do you have pro tips for three D animators? Yeah, I mean, I don't have I don't have software knowledge tips, but everything that I'm telling you right now applies to three D. So, just because I'm drawing it doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you if you're if you're doing 3d so this is this is the shoulder blade on the other side here I'm going to drop the shoulder blade on this side because and we're actually gonna we're not going to see this shoulder blade I'm just drawing it out right now because I want you to understand because the the, the foot that's passing through is actually the foot on the other side it's the front left foot this foot the front right foot that's the foot that's going to come off the ground and pass through. So I'm just going to draw it like this. Do you animate the tail as you go together with the line or will you come back to it uh, to focus on the animation separately? Uh, sometimes it, it, you can do it both ways. Do want to, I wonder, do I, do I want to bring it like this or do I want to bring it up high? Do you want to bring it up high like a... You can go with this or you can go with that. I don't know. Let's see. Let's do this. I just want to see. I'm going to bring this shoulder up. Whoops. I just want to experiment. Let's bring this shoulder up. So that shoulder's coming forward. Bring the arm up. The upper arm. So we're going to bring the elbow up here. So it's a little more, you know, I just wanted to see what the attitude might be if we lift that arm right up in the air. And notice that foot turns in. So we're going to see the bottom of the pad like this and the toes. Like that. See that? It lifts it up and places it. I'm, d I'm doing everything a little exaggerated here. I just want to see what that's going to look like. So is the shoulder high on the standing foot and low yes. on the foot that's in the air? Yes, exactly. Because the, the reason the, foot, the, the shoulder blade is low on the foot that's in the air is because the, the weight is taken off of it. The, the shoulder blades aren't connected to... The skeleton. They're only connected, uh, but they're not bone to bone. They're only connected through tendons and muscles. And so when you take the, when you relax the muscle, the weight brings it down. And so that's why when you see a cat walk, you see when they take that step, that shoulder blade gets pushed up because the weight is supporting it. And then the, the foot that takes, that comes off the weight, that shoulder blade drops. And so you get this back and forth. It's kind of the same when when humans are standing, sometimes they lean up, lean over to one side, yeah. and, the, and your hip, your hip naturally take, raises. Exactly, and the other hip drops. So here the foot, uh, I'm dropping the body a little bit here, and I'm going to drop the hip down to here. If this foot here has just come off the ground, then that means this back foot has just come forward 
and replaced it. Person that asked that question makes sense. Gravity. 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 It's working against me. Oh, John Mayer. <laughs> So here, notice that I'm not placing the foot exactly where the other the front foot was. Sometimes you can. In this case, because I'm having the front feet take such small steps, it's going to be a little bit short. Uh, Nick is wondering if you can move the TV paint slightly to the right because your camera was covering the frame. Gotcha. Thank you. How's this? Is that better? Yeah, that's, that's better. Is that better? Is it that better? See there? <clears throat> and so let's do the same thing here. So I'm going to, if this foot's forward, like so, then we're going to bring this foot, this leg, back. This is the thing. Once you understand where those, I was talking about like earlier, where the, uh, I want this to be right about here. We want the same distance between these two as these two. So I'm going to place that foot here. Um, once you have the placement of those first feet, then, then you can just really kind of talk yourself through the rest. Did you ever use video references of when you first animated? Absolutely. I still do. I'm going to pull that ankle up just a little higher. Yeah, in fact, most references are, or most animations are done through referencing. Not, not most. A lot. Yeah, but a lot. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'll do a lot of stuff out of my head, uh, but I'll, I'll reference stuff as well. I, um, it's very common. It was very common for us, um, as Jim Jackson can attest if he's still <laughs> listening, because we used to film each other. Um, we would film each other, you know, doing performances. Matter of fact, it was Jim Jackson. If you watch Beauty and the Beast, and uh, the Beast is leading Belle to uh, her room after he takes her out of the dungeon, and, uh, and he's telling her, you can go anywhere you like except the West Wing. And she goes, what's in the West Wing? He goes, it's forbidden! And he turns around. Um, when he, when we cut, we cut to a really wide shot, and you see him take his cape and he, it's there. The camera's down low, and you're looking up like two floors, and you see him take his cape and throw it back, and turn and walk. That was Jim Jackson. That was Jim Jackson. Yep, because I had to animate that shot, so I got Jim to put a cape on, and he threw the cape back. I don't know if Jim remembers this. He threw the cape back, and then walked out, and I used that as reference uh, for when I animated that shot. Nice. Deep. Do you, uh, do you know anybody that hardly ever or, or never use reference at all for their... Well, for their Rune Beneke, Rune Beneke animated the... Uh, he's still just one of those genius animators. Um, he animated the mother bear, uh, Coda's mom. Uh -huh. And a lot of that bear fight stuff... Actually, I think all of the bear fight stuff and all the stuff out on the glacier... Yeah. He did it all out of his head. All out of head. Yep. The guy's a genius. He's wicked smart. He's wicked smart, see? How did you learn locomotion uh, from this old book where they shot walking animals in black and white? I uh, can't remember the name. Oh, um, Mybridge. The Mybridge books? My bridge books? I, I have the My Bridge books. It's called Animals in Motion. Here's I was, remember I was looking for it before? Yeah. I, there it is. I just happened I just <laughs> looked up and there it was. My Bridge. Right here. Uh, Animals in Motion. This is a great resource uh, if you're trying to understand locomotion. These are made back in the late uh, 19th century. And uh, um, Edward My Mybridge was fascinated. He 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 created this before there was even uh, uh, movies. He set up a series of cameras that would get triggered as an animal moved by or a human went by and he was able to get all these different shots that um, he was able to break down and look at uh, action analysis. And so there's several books in the series 
and um, and they're they're really cool because they're just full of action analysis, and you really can get a good sense of movement in these books. So there you go. And that was one of your big sources for uh, for the locomotion. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So uh, here the shoulders are up. I'm going to bring the head up just a little bit, but why I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to trace it. You cheater. Oh, yeah. I'm all about the cheating. Any way to get the, the work done a little quicker, if you can cheat to get it done, then by all means, cheat. And that's one of the things I love about TV paint, because I can go in here and trace it now also now my volumes are are right on everything's right where it's supposed to be right on right on right on right on brother. I'm gonna get these this head up here put that right about there so here so now I've, I've traced this head now I can just grab it and now I can just move it up. Mm -hmm. Moving on up. There we go. Right there. I'm just going to have a slight amount of up and down to the head. I don't want to have it completely still because it'll 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 be it'll stick. It won't be it won't look good. So it clear the selection. Go back to my pencil, and we're back to drawing. So here you can see that little slight up and down right there on the head. Oops, where am I going? There we go. Uh -oh. I'm going, I'm clicking back and forth on my arrow keys. Facebook comment, an aquatic course series would be awesome. I've been trying to work out how the four paddle animals might have swum and some outside ideas would be helpful. Definitely something worth paying for. You know, one thing to look at is turtles, especially sea turtles. Look at sea turtles and how they move. It really, there's not really much of a pattern to it. A lot of times the um, the four paddle animals don't really use the back feet uh, except for steering. And for the for the power, they use uh, the, front, the front paddles, flippers, whatever it might be. All right, I'm talking too much on this. I got to get this drawing done. So here, I'm going to bring this down. I mean, we're already an hour into it, and I've only gotten three drawings done. We got to get this done, man. <laughs> I'm not going to make quota. I got to say, one of my when it comes to underwater uh, creatures, one of my all-time favorites is the uh, manta ray. Oh yeah, they so, just so graceful, right? They. They swim with so much with so much grace. Exactly. And in the big in the big island in Hawaii, you can uh, go out night swimming with them. What? Yep. I haven't done it. I want to do it. But the last time we were in Hawaii, I wanted to go do it. We just never got around to it. Don't you dare do it without me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's our first. There's our, our our next opposite key. Okay. So you can see we got a little up and down. Let me turn this off so you can see it better. There we go. See that? So now, just like we did on the other one, I'm going to create a new drawing, and I'm going to—I want to trace back not this drawing, but this one. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just do the opposite silhouette. Uh, do you find it easier to animate a walk cycle? Uh, do you to animate a walk in a cycle or moving forward? When doing cycles, I tend to have trouble with the position of the feet. It's funny. I, I, a lot of times, especially if the if this if I'm just doing a pan or not not a pan, but if a character is just walking through and they're not changing size, I'll do a cycle and then repeg them because I find it easier. Could you do a skeletal walk cycle for Halloween with a few different critters? Oh, that's a cool idea. I like it. So I'm just going to trace back the head. 
We're not really going to get any side to side action because of the attitude. It's kind of a it's going to be kind of a stiff walk. Stiff. Yeah, cuz the timing, I'm going to slow it down. He's just going to be like you said, like you, like you said, it's like a military, like he's walking down through a crowd. A little bit like Mufasa when when uh when Simba was born in the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. I think this is going to be a little more military. <clears throat> so here I'm going to push that shoulder blade up right here on this side. Let's get that fur coming through here. Oh, Nick said he put a link to the Animals in Motion book. Oh, where am I here? There we go. So, if uh, click on that link and you'll be able to find the MyBridge books. So, once again, keeping... the silhouette the same. I still want to animate, so I'm looking at this arm coming back. I love doing this kind of animation because when you when you do it and you pull it off, take the time to do it right and you pull it off, um, you've created life. It feels so you know, like. You're a Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> it's just, it really feels cool. Okay, so there's that latissimus muscle kind of stretching and going back and forth. We're going to get this, get these hips to come down. Now I'm going to bring the hip back a little bit. And it's going to come back here. We're going to get a stretching of that skin between the knee and the belly. See that skin stretch? We've got it right here. Where is he? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Uh -oh. This guy. This guy. This guy. Right here. I'm, I'm exaggerating it, and he's not really pushing the stretch. Here we go. You can see it here. See that stretch between the knee and the belly, that skin? Right there. You want to get that. Make sure you get that. A little flappity. The flappity flipper. Flappity flipper. I'm pushing it right here. It's probably being there. The fl flippity flappity. Yes, you. So there we go. So here's foot coming back. You want to make sure you maintain those volumes. Here I'm, I'm stretching it a little bit. And then the other foot coming down here. Now because we're not really seeing any kind of perspective, the feet can basically go right in the same spot. We're, we're thinking. I'm thinking of the ground plane as just basically straight, a straight ground plane. Here, we'll come down. And get. It. Once again, I want to reiterate that you know these cheats that I'm doing, where I'm, re I'm tracing the the silhouette. It's can only be done. It, it actually helps really speed up 
the process for when I'm doing a demo like this, but it really can only be done in uh, uh, in profile and things like um, where to go this like this one. You can't, you know. Obviously, it's all straight ahead. Every drawing is unique. There's no way you can trace back anything. But you just, you know, you have to understand the the uh, once you understand the motion, then you can get away with that. Okay, so what have we got so far? So, pretty much finished this, I think. We've got everything in there. Um, so now what we've got, I'm going to turn this off, is we've basically got our walk. Let me put these on eights. And what I mean by eights, each drawing I'm going to hold for eight frames. This is going to be the stiffest walk you've ever seen, <laughs> but you're going to get a sense of it. Kind of reminds me of seeing the store, the storyboards in uh, Brother Bear, where you guys would just sit, have like two, three simple yeah. images of the same same animation, but just repeated. Like yep, that. exactly. So there's our. We've just come up with a very basic walk cycle with four drawings. These are your four keys. You've got the drawing where the shoulders are up. You've got two keys where the shoulders are up at the highest point. And the, and the each foot is straight down with one foot coming through and the, and, the, and then two keys where the hips are at the highest point uh, with one foot straight under and the other foot coming through and then vice versa where the feet are spread apart at the low point uh, you have that both in the front and the back okay so now it's a matter of doing breakdowns and uh, uh, in-betweens okay so I'm gonna go back and we're gonna put these all on twos now because I'm just gonna do a drawing in between for right now. What was the shortest amount of time you you took on on a shot, and what was the longest amount of amount of time you took on a shot? Um, I've done I've animated a shot in the movie in an hour, and then I've also that quick. Oh yeah, and then I've also animated no, like a take, like a quick. Yep. You know, you might oh, have like a shot a, that's like sixteen frames, and it's yeah. a quick take. And uh, I can animate that in an hour, but I've had other shots that, you know, were, you know, 45 seconds long, and it took me six weeks to animate. Mm. So, this takes different time. Twitch question, did you work on The Lion King? Yes, I did. This is kind of reminiscent of the walk Simba does during his teenage years. That's exactly right. I animated young Nala in The Lion King. I designed her. Can you hand me the maquette? Yes. Uh, no, oh. you have it over there. Where'd I put it? I thought you put it over there. Oh, you're right. I did put it. Where, where is it? Oh, there where it is. Where is it? Here's young Nala. Where's my my little young Nala. There we go. Okay. There we go. There she is. There we go. Little young Nala from The Lion King. Yeah, I animated Nala and uh, helped out with adult Simba a little bit. And then um, and also I animated Raja oh, uh, from you Aladdin. I also did um, Nala, young Nala's uh, Seraf body said. Yeah, Ser just during the bath sequence. Yeah, the Serafina. Serafina. So here, now we're going to do the breakdowns. So here I have the hips coming down. We're doing our in-betweens. But these are going to be more breakdowns. More or less a breakdown. So here, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of, I want to get some attitude in this step. So I'm trying to think here. Oh. Oh, this is where the foot's going to come up. So let me see. I'm going to bring the foot up like this. Starts to come up. Let's do this. That wrist comes off the ground. See how the elbow's coming up? This is why it's called a breakdown. It's because it's not a straight in between. I'm not just in betweening the movement. In be uh, I'm trying to figure out there's subtle changes within that movement. There we go. That foot's coming off the ground like so. 
here we have our other foot, our back leg, coming down. Did uh, Tony Cipriano make the Lion King maquette? No. He didn't. Tony Cipriano for the Disney films did uh, the Mulan maquettes and the Brother Bear maquettes. Do you know who did the, the Lion King maquettes? I can't remember. It may have been Ruben Procopio. I'm not sure. It may have been Kent Melton as well. So you see that foot coming down? See, boom, stretch. Uh, would the rise and fall of the hips and legs uh, be the same if the line was running? Yes, but it, it has more of a wave action through it. Yeah, if it's running, it has more of a wave action through it. So here, this is where you want to start thinking a little differently as well. As the hips are coming down, the tail is still coming up. Back here. Whoops. Did you know that James Gurney is doing a stream after yours? I did not. Old James Gurney, he's a master. He's pretty cute here, bitch. He's one of my favorite painters. James Gurney, and I, I was so lucky, I went to the Museum of Natural History in L.A. when I was living there and uh, got to see his paintings on display from Dinotopia. All the originals. See how that, that leg, the, the, uh, whoops, where am I? There we go. See how that tail drags a little bit, goes up before it comes down? It is really boring now. I know, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> All right, here I'm going to get this back foot in. Kind of a drag. All right, so here we're going to get this. There's the muscle thigh coming down. Right here, I want to get that, make sure I get the right thickness. Coming down and get that foot. Right here. See that? YouTube question. How would you chart this animation if you had to hand it over uh, to someone else to add the in-betweens? Could you show us? I will. Right now I'm doing the, 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 uh, the keys and the breakdown, so there's no charts yet. And a lot of times I don't chart until the very end because I, I figure out the timing as I'm going. There we go. Heads pushing up. And once again, I want to make sure that that foot right in between right there once it's planted it's got to move nice and even I might not I, I might not have paid a pay attention looking at the comments but did you explain on what um, they're seeing when it comes to the purple and the greens oh no I didn't so the, the green the green drawing is the drawing that's behind and the purple drawing is the drawing that's ahead. That's onion skinning. So the green drawing is the drawing behind, the purple drawing is the drawing ahead. So I know, but I still do it by kind of flipping. I I I like to see the movement that way. And I and I double check myself when I'm drawing uh, by using the uh, the blue and the green. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trace once again this section the head 
me is here. Says, yeah, I'm here. Hey, player. Hey, player. Hey, player. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So, once again, I'm going to trace the head off. Just tracing it off real quickly. Get that cheekbone in there. The soft palette underneath. Not palette, but the soft tissue underneath. There. Get the fur coming here and right there. So now, now what I'm going to do is just like on the tail, there's going to be a little bit of of uh, um, overlap on the head. So on the where am I? On the in between, it's going to come. He's coming down. So, whoops. Let me do this. There we go. I want to turn it up just a little bit. Actually, no, I'm going the opposite way. I'm going to come down just a little bit and just bring that down just a little bit right there. Just to get a little overlap there. Hit is return. There, What's is that? There, is there a reason you don't just copy and paste the head sometimes? Is it to make it look less stiff? Exactly. It's to make it look less stiff. Um, look at this. This is where I... Uh, here's an example of where I copy and pasted. I want to show you on my horse walk right here. Oh, yeah. See the head? <laughs> yep. Now we got the overlap, but doesn't it just looks like a piece of paper that was just repositioned? <laughs> yeah, it looks like somebody's just in the background going. Hey, yeah, exactly. Hey, hey. You don't you don't want that. The the line, the the that's what I love about hand drawn is having that live line. Yeah. It's moving the right way. It's just I got lazy and and uh, and did it this way, so I don't like that. So instead, I gotta say, like some of the, like one of the roughest animations I've seen recently that, whoops. yet gives it a lot more life to it, was the, eight the nineteen eighty one movie American Pop. Oh yeah, like I just watched that for the first time uh, over the weekend. Uh huh. Where, Last uh, it was last weekend, and I did this man, one by the, the way. The animation in that is crazy. Oh yeah, a lot of, ro a lot of roto, but really, but very powerful animation in there. So here, I want the head to drag the other way. Sorry, I did it the wrong way. I was yapping and not paying attention. So pay attention. Let me show you something. Let me erase this hill. So as the head. As the head's coming up, we get this feel. Today, Aaron didn't let me remind him to save because he turned on auto save. What comes next? <laughs> Aaron saving the grunge texture? Did I just change the wrong one? Uh oh. I did, didn't I? Oh no, here's our in between right here. What did you do? I think I pay I pasted cut and pasted the wrong one. That's yeah. <laughs> that was a key. I cut and pasted a key. I missed a chance to go. There we go. What'd you do? <laughs> Once again I was talking, not paying attention. <laughs> Clear selection, there we go. I was like, what did I just do to that? <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> What'd you do? So let's fix this. Oh my gosh. I can't I'm getting all out of sorts. So as the head comes down, let's see, I want to make sure I got this right. He's coming up, coming up. So as the head comes up, we're going to bring this halfway. And we're going to turn this down like this. I had it right. I just wasn't paying attention. Stop talking to me, Dustin. <laughs> Shutting up here. <laughs> you, know, but you know what's funny is, like if... If I'm like working or playing on a game or doing something 
and I'm just doing that one thing, I can go into La La Land. Oh yeah. And I can go into full autopilot and still and still be uh, still be able to work and function. Yeah. But the moment I try to talk. Yep. That's exactly it right. Just, the <laughs> autopilot just turns off. <laughs> and you can't. You're just you, like. Uh, you're just uh, like. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Yeah, I know. It's true. That's what happens to me. Kate says, we're learning quadrupec cycles in my class at Ringling right now. This is super helpful. Oh, good. Well, here I'm teaching you how to cheat. So once again, we can do the same thing. We can do, um, we got to do the opposite breakdown again. So here we can get away with doing the, uh, the, uh, 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 uh there we go, right there. Put a, there and we're gonna go not this one but this one was it that one yeah and we're gonna turn this one off so now I'm gonna come in here and we're doing the same thing we're gonna like we did on the other ones we're gonna trace off that silhouette So that you can kind of move a little quick, more quickly through these. So you four-legged walks in uh, at Ringling already. This is like your first week of school, isn't it? Second week of school. Ooh. Yeah. Once again, don't get caught up. Uh, once you understand the mechanics, don't get caught up in the mechanics because it's really about attitude, personality, all of that. Going with the grain. With, with the, the with. Ever right. since I made that connection, <laughs> I've never been able to unsee it. <laughs> every time I watch that movie, I think of I think, think of, of your courses, and every time I watch, every time I'm editing your courses, and I see that happening, I think of that movie scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Bridges, man. I am the dude with the grain. With see what I'm doing here? Just gotta gotta go with it. You, you don't fight the big waves. Long show. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that foot's a little low, but I'm just gonna roll with it. We're gonna. I'm just. I'm, we're running out of time here. Actually, I think we've already passed our time. Uh, no, it's two twenty-three. We got up. We got till two thirty. <laughs> I'm not even close to having this done. We're gonna just keep going. I'm gonna keep going. For those of you that want to stick with me, you can. We're gonna. I'm gonna have this up. Uh, you can come back if you want to go on to one of the other demo demos, and then you'll be able to pick this up later. Come back. Come back. But I will continue on this. It will be done. Bringing that knee back. Knee back, there we go. And we're going to animate this till we get it on twos, I think. See that foot coming through? Here, I want to push that shoulder blade up. right six more minutes for the one more thing <laughs> well uh, there's about 50 more things on this walk no, but the moment it hits 2 30 like oh wait one more thing one more thing one more thing <laughs> like there we go
hear that other foot's coming in. Does drawing, uh, um, does doing more pages or drawings and animation uh, make smoother movements? Yes. More drawings make smoother movements. Now, you don't want to put too many drawings because you can end up having too many and it'll look like it's underwater or slow motion. So you work within the the timing of the of the, the number of frames per second. In this case, we're working at 24 frames per second. There we go. Okay, so here's what we've got. See there? You can see that, that stride. Got a nice regal look. So let's go ahead and do the other breakdown. Let's get these back to normal. Let's do this other breakdown, shall we? There we go. Bring it down. <laughs> my, apparently my Kate Winslet impression was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was that? From, uh, I think, from a ride from Titanic. It's like, come back! <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, any advice for keeping characters consistent? Yes. I'm always checking volumes. Always go back to your first drawing to see where you, where your volumes were. And then also, if you're designing characters, design them in a way that you can redraw your character over and over. Simple shapes. Even the Beast, who obviously was a complex character, um, it was constructed in a way that enabled us to draw him the same way over and over. So memorize how you construct your character. Come up with that method. I'm taking that weight. See that hip coming up? So here is where, which again, this is another breakdown. I'm going to have his foot coming out. See here. Let's bring this out here. Put a little drag on the tuft of fur on his elbow. And I'll just bring that foot up and around like so. So you can see this isn't a straight in between. This is a breakdown. There we go. So here, now you can see that foot coming forward and being placed. So he places it right down. Boom. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. And boom goes the dynamite. See there? See that foot get placed? A little drag on the, on the fur. Actually here, that's all right. I'll just leave it like that. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all right, so let's bring that in. Man, like, one yeah. thing I can't stand sitting in a hot office is sweating on my Cintiq glass. Oh. That's so gross. Yeah, just, you're going to need to wipe that down. Emily on YouTube says, I don't know if you remember him, but my grandfather happens to be Coach Ward from high school you and my dad went to. Your, your, your grandfather helped me through a lot of tough times in my, in my uh, 
times as a uh, as a kid in high school. I had a, a tough time at home, and your grandfather was my wrestling coach, and he was also my drafting teacher, and he was one of my best uh, confidants and just helped me through a lot as a kid. Uh, I love watching you animate, and your tips are super helpful. I'm hoping your grandfather is still around. I don't know if he's uh, not around anymore or not. Uh, but if he is, please tell him I said hello, uh, Emily. There we go. Here we go. So here, on the on the in between, I want to bring that tail down. And bring that sucker down. There we go. So here I want to get this foot up in the air, I'm going to pull it back, it's got to come up before it can come forward. Just like so. See that foot coming up and I'm going to let this foot, I'm going to let it kind of drag back like so. Make sure we got it enough in there. I think I do. There we go. All right. So we're getting this nice little regal attitude coming through. I'm going to lay in this foot here. Very quickly, just going to lay it in. all over it. <laughs> all right, so once again, I'm going to trace off our, our head. There we go. Question, have you uh, or will you animate animals that are extinct? I, uh, I have in the past. And I, but I haven't really done it for any teaching. That's a cool idea. We should do that. It'd be fun to figure out dinosaur movement. Dinosaur. Uh, how would you do research uh, since there aren't many videos on them and since they're extinct? Well, you find videos on, uh, you know, you look at ostriches and emus and, you know, other two-legged animals for dinosaurs or, and, or just similar uh, animals. Because not all dinosaurs were two-legged. But, um... But that's what you do. You find those similar, those similar animals in your research, and you look at how they moved. And you look at that structure. Once you, once you've studied enough uh, uh, locomotion and and the skeletal structures of different animals, and understand how they move, you can apply that knowledge to other skeletons, right? Tomorrow you're going to talk with uh, Manny about Yellowstone National Park, right? Yes. So here, I'm going to have the head coming up, and then it drops down. So that means on the in-between, I want that nose to drag. That nose to drag. So I'm going to bring the in-between here, but I'm going to turn the head up just a touch. Actually, are we doing two separate streams tomorrow, or is it just the one? Two. Two? Yeah. You got a long day tomorrow, son. <laughs> so there we go, and we'll go back to our pencil. I got my pencil. 
Give me something to ride on, man. There we go. So here, now you can see that head drag. See, we got a little drag in the head. See that? This is where you get the subtle nuances in the in-betweens and the breakdowns. The breakdowns start to give you the subtle nuances that you use for your, that you get into your in-betweens. All right, so there's our body there. Let's scribble that in. And once again, we'll go ahead and trace that one off. Whoops. That's right in there. That was our in-between right there. We're going to do the next one right here. And so I want to... Look at this one, look at this one, there it is. That's our, that's the one we're going to be tracing off. Tracing our silhouette. And this is a good way also, when, you, when you're doing this, like this, this is a good way of um, not getting any glitches in your animation. What I mean by glitches, it will, uh, sometimes you can get your stride not quite right. And, um, and it'll glitch from key to key. There we go. Just want to bend that knee. Bending at the knee right there. <laughs> He's still around. Don't worry. Good. He's probably a cranky old bugger. <laughs> He's probably still riding his motorcycles. I remember, man, he squeezed me one time. I thought he was going to break my back. He pulled me in. I was getting cocky out on the wrestling mat. I was a terrible wrestler. But um, I was getting cocky out there, and he just got up. He goes, Blaze, come here. <laughs> just crushed me. <laughs> Yeah, I think about him. I actually think about him quite often. He was such a, a big part of my life. I don't know if he realizes it or not, but he really was a really big part of my life. Uh, my home life was really tough. And so he, he was just a, a really good guy that helped me. Oh yeah, so I want to remind you that we got some really great specials including limited, limited edition prints and discounts this weekend. The, uh, this weekend only because of Lightbox. And so uh, uh, go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash LBX2020. helps you learn about anatomy and movement and does yes. it translate into your drawings? Yes. It does in mine. It always has. Very much does in mine. So here you can see we've got a full stride going now. See that? Just so you know it's almost 240. Yep. Just coming through here. I've got uh, just uh, once I get this down, then we'll we'll have one more set of breakdown or in betweens, and then we'll be done. I know I'm going a bit long. Like I said, we're gonna have this up. So if you want to go off and uh, see another lecture, another demo, please knock yourself out because you can come back and uh, you can come back and see this later. Come back. Uh, come back. Come back. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't going to glitch. So I'm kind of doing this by faith. Faith alone.
Have you animated a reptile's walk cycle or something without knees? No, I've never done anything without knees. I did a, uh, uh, I did this. Boom, 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 boom. This is just a quick demo, just talking about different modes of locomotion. So this is a little alligator walk, which is a completely different walk than what we're doing today. Down here in Florida, we call them Florida dogs. <laughs> Florida puppies. Florida puppies. Florida pups. <laughs> they are the cutest little things. I remember coming home from school one time. I was in uh, fifth grade, and uh, and there was one just parked right in front of the door of the house. Oh, really? Yeah. So as a kid, I had to go into the I'd go into the garage and get a broom rake. <laughs> and I, I was in fifth grade. I went and got a rake and went shoo shoo <laughs> shoot him away from the front door. And he just got up just like this. He just got up and walked away. <laughs> he did. He just walked. He literally walked down the street, and I and then I went in the house and did my homework. Yeah. Yeah. Gators aren't as dangerous as people think. I mean, yes, they are dangerous, but they're not like the moment they see you, they come after you. Or right. Like no, that. it's nothing like that. They're not like polar bears. <laughs> exactly. Holy cow, how long ago was that? That was, uh, that was about 42 years ago I showed up to have that alligator. Say so what? About 42 years ago I had that encounter with that alligator. It was just earlier this year where... I was about 10 years old. It was just earlier this year where I got up to probably three, maybe four feet in front of a gator getting uh, head shots and eye shots. Oh, yeah. Oh, out at the marsh? Out in the marsh, yeah. Yeah, we've got this really great marsh nearby where Dustin and I go out, and Dustin goes out and gets some really great photos. And actually, that's where a lot of my um, photos come from in my photo packs, which you can find on CreatureArtTeacher.com. Yeah, that's right. Dot com. And not only do I have gators there, but also otters and different sorts of the birds and all sorts of all sorts of neat creatures out there so be sure to go over there and check them out if you haven't already so let's look let's, let's see what we've got here let's put these on fours now got a couple little glitches because I uh, I need to go ahead and uh, but see that head see that head kind of the up and down on that head so we got a little overlap on there the only thing I don't like is the um, I don't like the shoulder the shoulders all messed up so the shoulder comes in comes up, up. yeah it's this one Imagine Man. animating jellyfish tentacles, or worse, centipede legs. <laughs> that would uh, take quite some time. Yeah, it's that's kind of annoying. That would be tough. I mean, I'm sure there's some um, some cheats or loopholes you can you can pull off to make it look believable in oh, simplifying yeah. it. But yeah, imagine trying to make it as realistic as possible. There we go. Nice. That's a little better on the shoulders. So when we play it now, it should be a little better transition on the shoulders. There you go. But you can see that up and down on the hips and that overlap on the tail. It's all very subtle. I'm really picking those feet up. And if you wanted to, we could slow it down even more. Put these on sixes. Now we're not going to go through the whole thing. To break it all down, it would take me another four hours. But I want you to at least see the keys and the breakdowns. So here's the pace that I think is right for that for this attitude. Uh huh. You can see that it's very deliberate. He's picking those feet up. And, I'm, and, and with the breakdowns, you can actually hold those feet back and then have them place them a little faster.
What do you think about The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, The Lion King 1 and a half, The Lion King live action movies, and The Lion Guard TV series? Okay, the only one that I've seen is The Lion King live action, which I thought looked beautiful, but I feel like they, through the realism, um, they lost some expression. So I thought that was a little rough. Um, and, uh, and I haven't seen The Lion Guard. So there you go. I haven't seen those. All right, so there's our, our, our basic walk cycle. I'm going to go through and hit some in-betweens, and, uh, and then we'll smooth it out a little bit, and then we'll call it a day. Have you ever animated a flight cycle or glide cycle? Well, I have. Let's see what we got here. Let well, me go. The most recent was the Birds of Prey. I know. Yeah. Let me uh, open. Uh, eagle. Whoops. Eagle. Takeoff, I think it was. There it is, Eagle Takeoff. So here's one, this is for this is in my Birds of Prey course, where I talk about, I go into the flight mechanics and uh, how a bird flies. And so this was uh, some animation that I did of an eagle taking off and going into its flight cycle. And so in this, I uh, in the course, I break it down for you. And uh, we talk about the mechanics of flight, how a bird gets lift, all that kind of thing. And that's all done right here. And this is obviously, you can see how smooth it is. It's, this is all on ones. One drawing for every frame. And uh, eventually we would get there for, uh, for the lion here. But we've just been talking a lot. <laughs> so this is, a, this is the pace. Like I said, this is the pace that we want. I think this feels good. So now I want to go through and we're going to break it down, like I said. So now, now you, this is where I would uh, turn my music on, kick back, uh, because it pretty much is straight in betweens at this point. And I'm going to go really fast here. Three hours later. Well, hopefully it won't be three <laughs> hours later. I've got nine more drawings to do, including this one. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to go very quickly. Actually, I can make adjustments too. So like on this one, I think I'm going to adjust so that we're here. Like so. Now I can go back to the in-between and it'll be more here. Like that. And we'll just color that in really quick. There we go. I'm going to really scribble these, scribble these in fast. go that foot's coming forward really just breaking down I'm looking at the heel here and the foot bringing that up I want to see that the, the glute muscles coming through so here I'm getting everything down to threes you can see that that movement see that movement right there Here I'm just going to in between. I'm not going to trace back the head anymore. I'm just going to in between it. Very, very quickly. So 
So once again, going over to creatureartteacher.com slash LBX2020 and uh, you'll be able to find some really cool deals on prints and courses and all kinds of stuff for Lightbox this weekend. It's only this weekend. There we go. Notice how rough I'm keeping it too. You know, you can animate something really quickly. Normally I can do, a, you know, we can do a quick walk cycle like this. Oh, probably in about an hour, hour and a half. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. There we go. So there you can see that movement coming up. Let's get to that next one. On to the next one. That shoulder is dropping. That leg's coming forward. What part of animation do you like more, the keyframes or the in-betweens? I like doing the keyframes. That's where it's all defined. That's where you figure out the movement. That's where you figure out the emotion comes across and you know all the all the cool stuff is defined in the keyframes. The in-betweens are great because you can just kind of sit back and relax. But that's not where the life is. The life is in those keyframes. That's what defines the rest of the animation. There we go. Moving very quickly. See that foot come up? There is a little bit of a... i got to bring this forward a little bit. Just a little bit, which means I want to change this. Just a hair. Bring this back here. Just a hair? Just a hair. Just a hair. There we go. That feels a little better as he's coming forward. YouTube, is it a good idea to keep the drawing simple before starting to animate? Yes. Just keep that, and I would say keep the animation simple too. Keep that drawing simple. And I go through and I, I, and I, I go rough. You know, here you can see how rough I'm drawing. And a lot of times if I'm doing really broad animation, I'll go much more rough than this. I'll scribble it right in. Is there any animal you find difficult to animate and why? Well, there's it's animation's always difficult. I never have an easy time animating. I have methods to attack the animation to make it easier or less hard, I should say. Um, but yeah, I mean, all I think all animals have some kind of quirk to them that make them you know, a little harder or, or whatever. But which one do you find the most difficult? I don't, that's what I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm trying to just like talk a lot because I'm, I'm thinking at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, Delaying. but they're, I mean, they're all, I don't, I don't know that the one's more difficult than anything else. It's just, they all have their own set of, of issues. You know, that, that bird game. flight, that bird flight was, you know, just as difficult as 
doing the polar bear bounding in, you know? Have you ever tried animating a snake? <laughs> <laughs> I Well, you know what? I never have, but I would imagine that that would have its own... In order to make it really feel like a snake, there's certain things you have to do. I know it seems like, oh no, you don't have to do anything. You just move this tube around, right? But no, it's there's actually a snake has a very particular way that it that it moves around. And if you look at you know look at Ka from Robin Hood, I mean the Ka from Jungle Book. There's also um, Hiss. from Rob, from Robin Hood. They're practically the same character, just one yeah. in costume. <laughs> I know that's true. They're even voiced by the same person, aren't they? That I don't know. What's his name? So there, now we can see, we can start to see the, the movement much more full. Remember how jerky th those four those four keys were when we were figuring those out? Let me do that. There we go. But now you can start to see that full movement. This is where it gets kind of cool and kind of satisfying. Once again, it's it's finding those keys, getting those keys right, because those keys really dictate all the movement happening afterwards. Hey, Aaron, have you ever animated a flying dragon? If not, what would you use as reference? Since they have six limbs to animate, legs, arms, and wings. I have animated one. I can't remember what it was for. But um, I would use several different things. I mean you can once again you can uh you can think of other animals like for instance look at the look at the eagle take off look at the legs as he's as he's flapping his wings see those legs pump i would probably add that to the animation of a dragon flying using those arms to really help get those wings going i would apply my knowledge that i know of, a, of an eagle taking off and apply that to a dragon. A dragon. Oh. Huh? So I just look, so yeah, so, um, Sir Hiss, from, Sir Hiss from Robin Hood was voiced by Terry Thomas. Yes. Um, and the one, and Ka from Jungle Book was voiced by Sterling Holloway. Ah. Oh. That's so interesting because they sound so similar and yet they're done by different actors. There we go. Like, it, I, had, I had to look it up. Cause no, that's fine. But it's, it's cool when you do that. Sometimes you, you make a discovery you don't expect. Oops, I'm going the wrong way on this one. It should be turned in like this. There we go, like this. Just a little bit different. How long did it take you to animate a whole movie? <laughs> well, there is when we were on the when we were on the Lion King and Beauty and the Beast and all that, there was there was probably about 50 animators. About 300 artists all together. 50 animators. And uh, it would take us about a year and a half to animate the whole movie. But you got to remember that the, it has to be cleaned up, has to be painted. It takes about four to five years to make an animated movie. But it takes about a year and a half to animate it. Do you add smears and simple animations like these? Um, <laughs> animations. I do. Not, not, or if you're asking if it's, if it's um, for this speed, no, I don't. I do not. So here we go. We're going to have a nice little regal cat here walking, I think. 
once we <laughs> once I finally get through it. <laughs> I mean, I was yapping and yapping and yapping. Have you animated any deer species? Um, I want to say I have. I'm trying to think of what. I don't remember any. His foot is just coming off the ground. Um, I've done it for like for myself, just real simple stuff. But I could, I mean, I could do it. I've looked at it enough. My favorite movie is Bambi. My favorite animated movie is Bambi by far. Mm -hmm. Those are real deer. When you watch that film, those are real deer. It's just incredible how they were able to do that. And it hadn't really been done before. It, they were able to do that because they brought deer into the studio. Now, you know, it's everybody does it. You know, you do your research and you bring the, you, you do the right research. Which if you look at the, the, the time span between Bambi and Snow White, I think it was only, was it seven years or something like that? And it's completely, completely different. There we go. So I'm going to play this at speed so you can see. See how that foot comes up and poof, plants it, poof, holds it up and boom. And I think that's what I want to do. I'm going to have him just like plant it. So when I do the next in between, right here, this in between, I'm going to have that foot already on the ground. For a feature length movie like Brother Bear, how much test footage and concept art gets created in addition to the final animation? Well, we spent we spent probably a year and a half, almost two years in pre-production doing concept work. Actually, I'm gonna put it down, but not have it pressed all the way. Yeah, that, that hair on the elbow has got to catch up. Get a nice, whoops. Get a nice straight right there. So if I play it, boom, boom. See that foot just plants right there. And you see the fur on the elbow, how it follows and catches up. There, see, we're getting some nice attitude here. We have the mechanics of a walk, but we also have personality. And it really, that a lot of that personality is just coming from just the, the posture that he has. Just the posing. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. We're getting there eventually. We're getting there, brother. We're getting there, brother. <laughs> Animation's fun. It's slow, but it's fun. Sort of like watching grass grow, <laughs> but it's fun. So here I'm getting that other foot plate laid in here. Gotta get so, the. So what you were saying before is that so Snow White was a springboard prototype for the beauty of Bambi. I didn't realize. Thank you. You <laughs> are. You are welcome. Bring the ankle down here. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. All right, man, I 
I gotta, I'm gonna have to clean my the glass on here. We'll need to put some bleach. You want to switch over to the other camera? Someone asked yesterday, they wanted to see how big we were drawing. There we go. So I want you guys to see how big I'm able to do this. This is just like, this is what I like about, this is what I like about working with a big Cintiq on TV paint like this. This is the same size I used to animate on my desk, on paper. And so it enables me to, because a lot of people ask me, how do you draw at that angle? Well, I drew at this angle for 30 years as an animator. So that's probably why I like to draw at this angle. Well, There's that movement. See, we're getting nice, smooth movement in there now. Was that comfortable for you because you were able to? Flip, yeah, I'd flip, flip the paper and I could here? see over the top. You know, that's I would when I'd flip the paper, I could see down into it and I could see the animation. So here, I'm just used to drawing at this angle. <laughs> We're getting there, brother. Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> oh, I love animation. Aaron and Dustin, you are amazing. You're so inspiring. Dustin, can you imagine how the voice of this character could be? Hmm. What character? Is it an image? Of the, uh, of your, of the lion here. Oh, this character. This character. I'm thinking... Well. Something similar to the to the sergeant character from uh, We Were Soldiers. You know who I think it would be. Like, nice, nice weather today, sir. What are you a weatherman now? <laughs> I w I think we could do. I, I you know who I've always wanted to animate, and I think he I think he could do the voice of this character. Jeff Bridges. No, Bill Nye, Ooh. not the science guy. Bill Nye, the uh, the British actor. Do you fear Dave? <laughs> but yeah, my favorite movie. I've of always his, wanted to animate to his voice. Yeah, my favorite movie is that he's in is Pirate Radio. If if the any one, of you out there have not seen Pirate Radio, you're missing out. It's I love In Time, movie. where he plays the dad in Time. Mm. God, it's, it's such an emotional movie. It gets me right in the heart every time. So there you go. So let me let me play this again. You can see that pace. They, and you know, those you know those front feet aren't taking really big strides. Just very slow, deliberate strides. It's kind of fun. Just thought of that scene from um, Pirate Radio. Like, so your mom thought take sending you out to fresh air would would sort you out. Spectacular mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Man, Bill Nye would be awesome, wouldn't he? Oh yeah. Oh, and also that's another good one, Sean Connery. Oh yeah. I think it's spelled S E A N, not S H A W N. Whatever. Whatever. You you still read it right. Whatever. Welcome to the rock. You mentioned you wouldn't use smears on this speed. Would you only be used for animation depicting very fast movement then? Yes. I do uh, I do smears and I do like really big deformations. Really big drags. That's a lot of smears. Let me pull up something real quick. I don't know if I can do it on the. Uh, oh, it's up there. Yeah, I can't do it right now. If you look at my uh, the hippo animation that I did on YouTube, Hippo Funk. <laughs> um, when there's a part where he zips from pose to pose really fast, and I did smears on that, and that was really fun. And you can really see some crazy deformations that I did on that called Hippo Funk. Just a dancing hippo. Yeah, I don't have that foot sitting on the ground playing quite right, but we'll just we're just going to pretend that pretend that it is. 
just gonna fake it. We're just gonna pretend that it is right now. <laughs> just fake it. And this is why I want to fix this one too. Have that foot. So nice to catch what you're what you're doing, uh, Aaron and Dustin. Hope you're both well. We are fantastic. 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 And am I too late to send my art uh, through to you? No, you're not too late for the. You're not too late to get a uh, for scholarship consideration. You'll just be considerate for uh, considered for September instead of August. If that's what you're asking about. And I'm assuming that's what it is. That's the other thing. If you guys are interested in a scholarship, our, um, we are now giving, uh, once a month, Nick and I are giving away a $5,000 scholarship to help those in need for their education, their art education. And... Uh, we just got our, we have to go through our submissions for August. We're going to be picking those soon, be announcing that soon. But we're going to be doing it every month. So every month we'll be giving away a $5,000 scholarship. So if you're interested, and that's good for college and also online training as well. I also want to mention that our Birds of Prey course is in pre-order. Finally got it done, or at least I, we got it shot all the way. Dustin's still finishing up the uh, the editing. Yep. But uh, we're almost there. It's a couple more weeks, but you can get it in pre-order at CreatureArtTeacher.com. And you can get it for half off right now for pre-order. You know what's the movie I keep forgetting that Bill Nose in? Huh. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. He's in a lot of great stuff. There's our story. See that nice, subtle kind of overlap with the head? Just a touch that gives it just a little bit of life. We're getting a little bit of volume change in the, in the shoulder, but I'm going to roll with it anyway. And a little bit, so you got that overlap in the tail. If we play this at speed, so you get the low overlap in the tail, a little bit of overlap in the head. I like the drag. The drag on the fur on the elbow feels good. We're getting there. Three more drawings, and we'll be there. How do you, uh, where am I? Blah, 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 blah. YouTube question. How do you clean all that pencil off your flat screen TV? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> there we go. We're getting those tricep muscles in there. Getting that little tuft of fur on his elbow. He's all wet with water. Name that movie. Say it again. You got all wet. I got all wet with water. I don't remember that. Secret of Nim. Was the God. the the Raven character? What was his name? Oh yeah. I got all wet with water. <laughs> Jeremy. Wasn't it yeah. Jeremy? Something like that. God, I haven't watched that movie in years. I love that movie. Dom DeLuise. He was so good for animation. Yeah. Here we go. We're pulling this back. Getting this knee to come back. Really, just filling out the the action now, just smoothing out the actions. We've already defined all the 
the main movements and now we're just adding drawings to to smooth that out right now we're playing this at 24 what happens if we play it at 30 gives it a little bit more speed smooths it out a little bit but not so much speed that it goes too fast I kind of like that we're gonna uh, yeah we're gonna use that <laughs> all right can we get an art of Airblaze book <laughs> It was all caps, so I had to say that. Yeah, one. we're going to be doing that at some point. Eventually. We keep talking about it, but I also have to... we got to make courses. <laughs> and we keep... It's just a matter of putting our priorities in the right place, I guess. But we've just got a lot of... Right now, our priority is not so much a book as much as it's getting other stuff done. One of those things is Snow Bear. We really want to get Snow Bear done. So now that we're done with the Birds of Prey course, we'll take a little break from making courses and jump over to Snow Bear. Your line is perfect. Isn't the right hind leg jumping? Uh, I don't know. Is the right hind leg jumping? I don't see it jumping. I don't feel tardy. Now I have to. There's a, a big jump between this drawing and the first drawing. I haven't done the in between yet. So that might be that might be the the pop that you're seeing. Because it it gets a little skip there at the end because we haven't done our in betweens all the way through the cycle yet. go we went on what time did we go on at one one so we've been at it for two hours and 18 minutes hey we're doing a marathon sorry folks <laughs> sorry Nick this one got away from us I was talking too much <laughs> There we go. Let's we got two more drawings then we're done. Two more. How would you animate robot animals? <laughs> well, you think about the traits of a robot for whatever you need in that particular instance and you animate it like that. I would do really quick jerky movements. Just watch RoboCop and you'll be set. Come with me or they'll be trouble. Surrender now or there will be trouble. Trouble. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. <laughs> that movie was so graphic. Oh yeah, all the squibs. <laughs> I think Robocop has the record of u of using the most squibs in a in a movie. Oh really? I think so, yeah. I just I saw it. What was it? Was I in college? I think when that came out, and it was just the, the most graphic movie I'd ever seen up to that point. Most groups used in the movie. Come with me, or there'll be trouble. Once this is done, we got one more drawing. One more in between. Sorry it took so long, guys. But it was fun. We got a lion walking. Got an attitude coming out of it. Alright, let's get this foot coming forward. Right through here.
Whoops. There we go. Right there. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it was Robocop, and apparently it was on, most of them were from a, from one scene, and it was the scene when they're first show, demonstrating yeah, the, in the, the office. Walker, the office scene. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> he just, he just gets obliterated, <laughs> and, uh, and here's a, uh, article on it, uh, Kevin Page, who is the, the actor, I think, um, was hurt when his character was being shot to pieces, even yelling out in pain after cut was called. <laughs> it was a visit to the cafeteria over lunch where the special effects crew on Robocop found what they needed to make one of the most violent deaths in 1987 sci-fi classic, as gruesome as director Paul Ver Verhoeven uh -huh. imagined. An estimated 200 blood squibs <laughs> Small one-way charges strapped onto then 26-year-old Kevin Page to make it appear his character, Omni Consumer Products uh, Junior Executive Mr. Kinney, was being decimated by the tremendous firepower of the enormous <laughs> robot police officer ED-209 weren't enough for the director with eccentric tastes. <laughs> the inventive solution launched special spaghetti squash. <laughs> Nick, you have to do so. <laughs> so there's our movement right there. I just we have to loop back into the uh, back into the uh, uh, cycle. So I got to copy the first drawing, paste it right there, and then we put another in between, and we're going to in between right back into. The beginning of this of the cycle and then we're gonna be done now obviously we would have more in-betweens to do but uh, we're not gonna do that and even still at running my mouth a lot for the last two hours two and a half hours it's, it's uh you know once you talk your way through it it's amazing how much you can get done you know it shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours to get a decent walk cycle and a run cycle is even quicker you just gotta think about those physics think about the anatomy drag the ground but not quite when you watch a, a, a cat walk they almost drag their foot on the ground Matter of fact I can shorten that up just a touch Robocop had squibs in it? <laughs> no, it was real. It was all, yeah, they used real, real armor piercing bullets. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're getting there. Oh, we're so close. Oh, oh we're so close, Randy. Oh, burr. Twitch comment. I was trying to animate a walk cycle a while ago, and I just realized that your walk cycle barely lifts his paws up to walk, while mine lift them up high because I didn't use a reference, and I hated how mine looked. I'll redraw it tomorrow and see how it looks. Helps a lot to see a professional do it in front of us. Oh, good. Because I was afraid you guys were getting bored. I hate taking so long. I always get very, very paranoid that I'm taking too long. I 
that foot right on the ground. Boom. Place it right there. Boom. Boom. Where do you find 200 squids? <laughs> you know, squids. squids. <laughs> <laughs> Little calamari. Little calamari, yeah. That's a lot of calamari. Oh, man. Okay, um, for those of you that have Netflix, and uh, if you're in the States, I'm not sure if they're playing the same Netflix library uh, overseas. But for those of you that can watch this, uh, and if you love animals as much as I do, watch my octopus teacher. Octopus teacher? My octopus teacher. I just watched it last night. I cried. It was, it was so touching. And it's about an octopus, a real octopus. It's so good. It's about this guy's... First of all, octopus and squid are some of the most intelligent creatures in the ocean outside of cetaceans, you know, whales and, uh -huh. and that sort of thing. Octopus are highly, highly intelligent. And he... This guy goes out and he swims with this octopus. He lives off of a... He swims off the coast of South Africa. And he goes out every day for a year. He, he, he goes out one day and encounters this octopus and then wonders, what if I come back? I wonder if, we can, if I can strike up a relationship with it. And he does. And this octopus greets him, comes out, and it's like, it's the most incredible, cool relationship. It's such a great, and he's such a great narrator. He tells the story, mm -hmm. and he just does it in a way that's just so heartfelt and you can see that he he really loved this octopus and it was just it's so good so if you if you get a chance watch it my octopus teacher on netflix okay so here we are so we've gotten through we've done 16 drawings and here's our our very regal kind of walk And if I were to, uh, I would go in and in between it again, just to get everything really smooth. But you can see everything's just nice and very, it's very deliberate. That's what I wanted. I wanted him to be standing tall. And you can see those foot, those feet you know, push down. He plants them very confidently. There's not a ton of movement in the head. I didn't want, but I did want enough that we, it, it did, the animation didn't feel stiff. A little bit of movement in the back foot. The other big thing to remember on four-legged locomotion, uh, just from a mechanic standpoint, is um, people get confused in the transition parts, where, parts where you have to lift the foot to go to the next step. Remember, you have to actually lift it before you can move it forward. Lift, and then move forward. Lift, and then move forward. And then once you, and then the other thing too are those shoulder blades. Making sure those shoulder blades and hips are moving in the right way. So there you go. Uh, I don't have any questions up from Nick on this end. Do we have anything new over there? Uh, nothing really over here. Just a couple of comments, and that's about it. Okay. Well, there you go. Well, like, well, there you have it. Us, the lady, the cookie crumbles. And the other thing we can do is I can... Well, I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna put. I was gonna. Well, we're, we're playing it at thirty <laughs> frames a second, and I'm playing it on threes. I was gonna move it to twos and play it at twenty-four frames per second, but it's really not gonna change the look of it that much. Gotcha. So, but there you go. Uh, Nick was saying uh, that he recently listened to Radio Lab, and there's a lot of species of octopus we know almost nothing about. That I did know. Uh, for instance, scientists recent. Oh, there it goes. He just got rid of it. <laughs> Wild Earth Safari uh, live twice a day is great also. Yeah, I've watched oh, that it is. all the time. It absolutely is. I love that. Show. So there we go. So there's our big male lion. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, so for instance, scientists recently discovered that one species that one species sits on their, le on their eggs for five years waiting for them to hatch. When, the, when they do, the mother dies. They don't eat or leave them at all for the entire five years. That's strange to me because I, I thought because most octopus only live two to three years. I know squid are like, they're the kings of, of fat, living fast and dying young. Most squid only live about two years. 
But I thought octopus um, mainly lived about three, maybe four years. I guess there's a, a longer living one. Because uh, in, in this one, uh, he does, we do get to, to the point where she lays her eggs. It's really, you got to watch the movie, It's it, the documentary. It's an hour and 25 minutes, something like that. Hour and, fi hour and 12 minutes. It's not that long. But anyway, here's the, this is the our walk. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was kind of long-winded, but I really enjoyed talking with you guys. I always love sharing this stuff and sharing stories of the old days and and uh, and then getting questions from you guys. It's it's always a pleasure for me. But remember, you know, once you get those mechanics in your head, do your research, get that in your head, and then focus on the attitude. Focus on the character, the personality, and insert that into the the mechanics that you're going to be using okay let the mechanics support your personality don't do it the other way around okay so i hope you guys learned something um we'll make this available on the website the tv pp uh file and uh, i think we can do that can we do that nick i'm not sure if we can or not but if we can we will make it available and uh otherwise uh i hope you guys like i said i hope you learned something i hope you have a great rest of the the weekend. We're going to be back again tomorrow. I'm going to be back twice. I'm going to be with Manny Carrasco and Expedition Art, and we're going to be doing some drawing from Yellowstone Park and some of our experiences out there together. We're going to have a good time doing that. And then right after that, we're going to be getting into uh, how I use photographic textures in my character renderings, in my character designs and creature designs. So that's going to be a lot of fun too. So uh, I hope you learned something. I looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Remember, go to creatureartteacher.com slash LBX2020 and you can get some great deals, uh, prints and some discounts on our courses. And also, remember, we've got our Birds of Prey that is freshly out as of yesterday at 50% off for pre-order. So uh, enjoy that as well. Go to creatureartteacher.com for that. So uh, I don't have anything else to say. I had a great time animating this lion and I will catch you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. If you're interested in any wildlife photography, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze. And afterwards, you can also check out my reference photo packs on CreatureArtTeacher.com as well, where there's a lot of different Florida wildlife out there. Really good uh, stuff for you to get some artwork go going out there. And uh, yeah, other than that, see you guys tomorrow. And until then, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.